Hi, my name is Matt Bowler, and in this video we will be discussing site-to-site -site IPsec GRE tunnels configured through Cisco's own Security Device Manager, or SDM. We're going to be using the same basic topology that I've uh, used in previous VPN and GRE tunnel labs, where we have three routers, the home router, the office router, and the interwebs router which will be essentially simulating a network where the uh, traffic that travels between the home and office router through the GRE tunnel will be transparent to the interwebs router and will will show that uh, none of the routes the static route or either of these networks uh, in red will be learned by the interwebs router which makes that tunnel uh, useful for us. We'll be using the tunnel in tunnel mode rather than transport so that we have an entire packet encapsulation and encryption. The interesting traffic that we will define across this tunnel is networks 172.16.1.0 with a 24-bit mask and our loopback over on the office router here with the 192.168 1.10 address and a 32-bit mask. Between the three routers on the 10.1.1.0 network and the 10.2.2.0 network, we will have EIGRP and uh, Autonomous System 10 configured so that these three routers can communicate with each other. But as I mentioned before, the interwebs router will have no visibility of either of these outside networks and that's what we, we want to accomplish when we're doing uh, a configuration like this with a GRE tunnel or a VPN connection across a public network. We want that traffic to essentially be transparent and uh, prevent any possible attacker from sniffing out information and uh, getting access to our networks. So site A will be the 10.1.1.1 address and site B will be 10.2.2.1. Uh, we'll go through that configuration in the STM and I'll show you how to set set that up. The 10 the I'm sorry, the 172.16.1.0 network will reach the 192.168.1.10 network via an uh, IP route, a static route here. You can see it specifies the destination network and the forwarding interface. And we basically have that configuration reversed for the office router. The GRE tunnel can be used for several things. Uh, it's commonly used for IP version 6 op over IP version 4. Uh, VPN is a much more common implementation with the IPsec in a practical uh, real-world sense in that you can set up the VPNs fairly simply on even a low-end router, but uh, a GRE tunnel is still used uh, in the networking world today, and if even if you are implementing an IP version 6 over uh, IP version 4 tunnel, security is key on any network so implementing this with IPsec and all that comes along with that is uh, it's good knowledge to have Cisco may test you on this on the CCNA security track or down the CCSP track and with the SDM Cisco always wants you to know how to use their uh, proprietary software and their applications which can be used to control our devices. What we'll be doing here is instead of using the wizard within the SDM, we'll, we'll kind of break it down a little bit. Uh, we'll create the tunnel interface through the SDM. We'll create these static route through the SDM and we'll also go through and generate uh, the required elements for IPsec and uh, ISACAMP through the SDM so you can kind of get a more firm understanding of the elements and the technology that goes uh, into configuring the actual tunnel itself. 
the interwebs router and the office router are currently configured for EIGRP and their interfaces are configured. You can see here on the office router the interfaces are assigned the addresses that I have listed and the interwebs router also properly configured. If I do a show IP route here, uh, it's not really going to matter because these interfaces are directly connected. But there are adjacencies formed, uh, uh, neighborships have been formed here. So to further this along and start the process, I'm going to get into the home router and start assigning IP addresses to the interfaces. Before I start that, I want to create an enable secret password of Cisco, which is the common password that I'll be using in all of my labs. Uh, in order to access the SDM, you can use the built-in HTTP server, or you can use the HTTPS server. And since we're all about security here, we want to use the HTTPS server and disable the HTTP server. Before we do that, I want to create a user account in the local database and configure AAA for authentication and authorization. I can create the user account by specifying the username command with the username of Matt. I'm going to go ahead and assign that username a uh, privilege level of 15, which will give me full access. And I'm going to specify the secret password of Cisco. Go ahead and hit enter to add that entry to the local database. To enable AAA, I will issue the AAA new model command. Now I want to specify the authentication method for AAA. And I can accomplish this by entering AAA authentication for login. And I will use the default authentication list pointing towards the local username database. So it'll use that uh, the username that I just created. In order for the SDM to properly send commands and get into exec mode through HTTPS and the server uh, that we have configured, I'm going to have to specify authorization methods and rights for the particular account and login method. So to set up authorization, I'll issue AAA authorization. for uh, starting exec mode and, or shell and I'll create a new list called HTTPS login and use the local database. The other command I need to issue here is for commands in exec mode. So we'll go ahead and enter commands with the enable level of 15 and use the same HTTPS login list there pointing towards the local database. Now I want to disable the HTTP server so I can issue the no HTTP and server command so that will disable that service and when I enable the HTTP uh, you can see right here the secure server. It's gonna it's gonna automatically generate a 1024-bit crypto map uh, RSA key. So HTTP secure server. We'll see SSH become enabled here <laughs> as soon as that map is generated. And I want to specify to use SSH version two version 2. Now to tell the router how I want to communicate through the Telnet line 
uh, which is how the SSH is going to communicate through the SDM. I'll specify on the line VTY uh, 0 through 4 lines to use a transport method right here transport protocols I'll use a transport input method of SSH and I'll specify that SSH only 